you for a couple points. So, all right. Well, and then is that, let's see, no, that's not, that's a different diagram, isn't it? So now then, what, we're, what we've got to start talking about is the shear, and that's actually, uh, yeah, section 13.4, which starts on page 268, uh, we've got to start talking about what the shear stresses are going to be. Now, there is a sec there is a part of this section that it's like, oh man, it hurts to even think about it the way they write it up in this book. Uh, it, it hurt my head just reading it because I know what is beyond that and it's much easier after you get through what this cat tells you here, okay? So I'm not gonna go into his real deep as far as what he, has in the text. Uh, basically, what's going to happen here is you're going to be given a problem that's got these kind of forces on it where you're going to have to go in and figure out what the reaction at A is and what the reaction at B is, which again was like week, what, two or three? Okay, and and uh, as I remember, all you guys got through that. <laughs> So that shouldn't be a major issue for you, and we just did a little review of that. But now what we're going to do is we're going to ask you to find out what the shear force is at any location along that beam, and we'll specify that. And then what you're going to have to do is take that beam and cut it. Okay, so we've, we've found out what the reaction at A is, and we've got this 30 kilonewtons here, this 70 here, and this reaction at B. Okay. So we're gonna cut that beam then at some specified location, and we're gonna to try to figure out what the shear is in that beam at that location. Well, to do that, all you have to do is draw a free body diagram of what you're trying to figure out. And we're doing, it's like the section method, if you will. We're cutting a section through this plane, or through this beam, and, well, and actually, I skipped one. There's one over here at two meters. I wondered where that was at. But there's a there's a cut right here as well. Okay? So wherever you're trying to find out what it is, you're going to cut that beam. And, and the book tells you, and I, I tend to agree with this, go from the left side. Okay? And the convention that he uses, that's the thing that you, you really want to go from the left side, which I've been telling you that all along, right? Let's see if I, maybe I didn't even copy it. But the, the thing that, that makes your head hurt, I think, is if you look on page uh, 270, and I could pull it up, but he's, he's basically got a, uh, a couple pictures there that look like this. He's got a beam that he's showing a block right here, and then there's a block right here, right? And that's representing where the cutting plane is, and what's going on at that cutting plane. So there's, he says there's an external force pushing this one up, which in this case over here would be the reaction at A, right? Then, and, and so this would be the beam just sitting here, and actually you're trying to push that up. Well, the internal force is trying to push it back down, right? And he signifies that with a V for that shearing force, okay? If this is trying to push the left side up, then the internal shear is considered to be positive. But yet it looks like where the actual internal shear is pushing is, is pointing down. That's what it's like, oh, this, this hurts. This will make more sense when we get to the next section where we start drawing the shear diagrams. It'll make a whole lot more sense. It, did, it does to me at least. I just keep in mind that if this force is pushing it up, the internal shear is said to be positive. Conversely, if it's pushing down, then it's said to be going negative. Okay, so that, I think that's the big takeaway there.
All right. So what you have to do though is when when you're asked to do it at a certain position on the on the beam, then you have to go in there and draw a free body diagram of everything that's going on to where you cut it and to the left or cut it and go to the right. Didn't we just do that last in the torsion? We looked at everything. This is basically just like the torsion that we were just going through. And here's the key. If you cut it and look to the left and you sum up all the forces that are reacting on that beam, or if you cut it and look to the right, I should have said left for you guys, right? If you cut it and look to the right and do all the forces that are acting on that side of the beam, they better e equal each other. They better even out, okay? So in this case, if we found out that the reaction at, at A on this piece up here was 42.9, okay, then we have to list that as one of the forces that, that is reacting on that beam because that's, that's there, right? We didn't get to the 30 kilonewtons yet, so we can't add that in there. Fair enough. It's only things that are, that are reacting on that beam after you cut it. Just like in the method of sections, we only looked at one side and we only looked at the forces that, react, that were acting on that particular section of the, of the truss, didn't we? We couldn't add anything that wasn't there. We, in other words, you're taking, that, you're taking your zoom window in your CAD system and saying, okay, I'm dealing with everything right there. Anything that's in that window or crossing it, I get. And I take it down there to that free body diagram. Okay. Now, like I said, if you, so that basically what that's telling me then, the internal shear on this is going to be what? 42.9 kilonewtons. It really is that easy. There's nothing, there's nothing else there, is there? Now, there's also a moment acting on that, isn't there? Okay, and the moment on that would be what? 42. Times two. Remember, moments are force times distance, right? So it's a 42.9 <coughs> times two. So you would have, what, uh, 85.8 maybe? That be right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't think he actually did that in that example. Interesting. I don't see it there. Yeah, I do. Yeah, 85.8. Yeah, it's at the top page 271. Okay. So you found the moment and you found the shearing force, you know, the internal shearing going on in that beam at that two feet from the edge. Well, now let's do something here. Let's do this. So we said that was the case. Well, let's draw the other side of that. Do we know the reaction at B? Does it give it in there? Well, it would have to be, let's see, we got 100, right? 100 minus uh, 42.9, was it? So what's that going to be? Uh, let's see, 1. How much? 100 minus 40 kilonewtons, right? Then you've got 70 going this way and 30 going that way. So you got, well, okay. So you got 100. So over here we decided this was the uh, shear was, the shearing stress was going to be 42.9, right? So the shear in this is going to be 100 minus the 57.1, which just happens to be 42.9, doesn't it? So no matter which way you look at it, it should be the same at that position. Okay, now the shearing stress is going to be different uh, within different locations on that beam, okay? So the shearing and the moment. So 
how as far as I can. The maximum will be where your moment equals zero. Okay. And that's, that's we're going to find that so here. As we get through this goal. chapter, you'll see that. <laughs> because what we have to do, what we're going to end up doing, it, well, we're getting ahead of ourselves here, but we're, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up, and let me just go down to it. I don't want to have to draw it. That's a shear diagram, okay? Where that crosses zero should be the maximum. Now let's see if we can find somewhere in here. I know there's one, and oh, right there. Here's the shear diagram, there's a moment diagram. Right there where the shear diagram crosses zero, crosses the, the horizontal line, is your maximum moment situation. In a nutshell, okay. But so that answers your question. But we we still have some things to get there before we get to that, okay. And I figure uh, the way I'm figuring it, we're going to take uh, the rest of this week and probably next week to get through that, which should be plenty of time to to do what we've got to do, not stress you out, so you'll be good to go on your other classes, okay. But just keep in mind, wherever you cut it, whatever you do to the left should equal whatever you do to the right, as far as the shearing going on in that beam. All right? And we just proved that, didn't we? Real quick, like, we proved that to be the case. If we did our math right, that's the only way it would be wrong is if you screwed your math up. We could do a moment, it would be the same way, wouldn't it? The moment would be exactly the same. So, so when you cut it, scroll back up there real quick. So when you cut it at five feet or five meters, mm -hmm. there, you're going to have a different shear strength there than you would if you cut it at your two meters. Well, you'll have different internal shear. Yeah. Internal shear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In fact, let's just do it. I don't know if they do that in the book. But I'm going to erase that right there. Actually, he does. Yeah. That's is that is that one of the next ones? Yeah. Let's see. Do I have that on here? Yeah, here it is. At, here it is at five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here it is at five. So there's your, your so my free by diagram is going to look more like this, and that I didn't realize I got the whole thing there, but my free body diagram is going to look. Well, it is just exactly like his. So I've got the forty nine point two. That didn't change. Thirty because that's part of that, that window, if you will. And that's out at three meters. And then we cut it at five meters, right? But there is no force out there at five meters, right? So that's all you've got. So uh, if you do your, uh, so if we, well, if we did sum the forces into Y, right? That'd be fair to do. 49.2 uh, minus 30. Uh, what's that, 19.2 kilonewtons. And that's going up, right? Okay, but does that tell us what we want to know? No, that's, oh, did I, wait a minute, is it 49.2? He has an error here. Yeah. Look, he wrote 42.9. Yeah. So he just did an error. In the book on page 270, about two-thirds of the way down, the disc, and he did it in two, he did it the rest of the way through there. Or did we calculate that wrong? No, he's, he's got the. It's supposed to be 42.9. He did it at oh, okay. in the free body That's, diagram. And it's the same, yeah, I just read it right here. So this number. Yeah. And I went with what was showing there. It's like, wait a minute. Fix that. I, I kind of wonder about their proofreaders. There were some situations, it's like, wow, 42.9. But obviously, they just had a little dyslexia going on there. So then it's 12.9. Uh, 
9, right? So that's the, uh, so yeah, the internal shear. So note it says for equilibrium, the internal shear V must act downward as shown, and the magnitude is 12.9. But that is considered a positive. Again, because the the 12.9 is actually winning, so it's trying to push this left side up, isn't it? And we said earlier, if it's trying to push the left side up, that the internal force is considered positive, which is really, holy cow. Now the moment, so if we did the moment uh, for that, again, you've got 30. Now this, this is what I, this I really don't like. You're doing the moment, you're trying to find a moment right here, right? In everything that we've done to this point, if we were doing that moment, this 42.9 times the five meters, in our world, that would be a negative value in it. Not anymore. For some reason, if it's pushing up, it's considered positive. Okay. Then this, then the 30 would be negative. 30 times two meters, right? Oh, let's see. Well, now he's taking it. I guess that does make sense. Yeah, but up was positive and down was negative. Yeah, but see, that's the, the problem here is you're not taking it from this location, are you? That just doesn't make sense. Because he says that the 30 is times 3. Well, 3 is here. That tells me, see, that's that's really screwy. Yeah, it's You're clockwise. Or if that's just another type, you should have taken it, you should have done 2. Well, let's, uh, here, hold on, let's, I want to try something here once. I, and I, I looked this over earlier and didn't catch that, but I want to do something here. Let's do, okay, so he says 42.9 minus, or times 5 minus, uh, oops, 30 times 3, right? And then that, that's going to, now, somebody do the math on this. He says it's 124.5. Somebody punch that in your calculator. I want to do it our way. If it was... Uh, 124.5? It's a positive value? Yeah. Okay, so 42 point, negative 42.9 times 5 plus 30 times 2. What's that come out to? Negative 154.5. Yeah, see that's... So there is a difference there. So we'll have to go with his convention at this point. I don't like it, but... If the force, if the force is going up, it's positive for this moment, which, oh God, that just pains me really bad. I need to look at my old book and see what it does. Times five, but then it doesn't make sense that this is going down, but we would multiply by three. That just hurts me too. It really does. I don't, yeah, I don't get that. See, because it says it says it flat out it says the moment M shown at the right end of the beam section in figure thirteen ten, that's this picture right here, represents the internal bending moment of one twenty four point five and is equal and opposite to the moment due to the external loads. I, I I'm going to have to look at that some more. I, I do not go along with that at all. I do not. And I'm going to look at it. I'm going to have to look at that some more because that just hurts me really bad. So what would the other way be if it was 42.9 negative times 5 and then a positive 30 times 2? Yeah. Well, and even if we, even if we 
didn't if we went with his convention of the 42.9 and left it positive times 5 and this is negative 30 times 2 if you ask me and you said that was 154.5 that to me I mean, if you're taking that moment from this side right here that 3 meters does not belong in there it's 2 meters and I, I just can't go along with that. Now let's look and see what he does at nine meters. And maybe he straightens it up here at nine meters. Let's look and see. So for the, this is at nine meters. So uh, what do we have? So we've got for the, uh, for the shear, and again, he's indicating that with a V, 42.9. Did get it back to the right number there, didn't he? Minus 30, minus 70. So that was the 50 something, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And that's a negative value, kilonewtons, which is indicated by this force going up. And there again, well, huh? But the moment part of that, let's see, if we're doing it the way I think we should be doing it, and then again, that's, it, it even shows taking a moment over here. Yeah. Okay, so I would start out with the 70, and uh, let's say, if, if let's keep it as a negative. 70 times, uh, what, 0.5 minus 30 times 6 plus 42.9. Times uh, nine. Really? Yeah. I think that whole problem is just on figure thirteen ten. Uh huh. He's just messed it up from the go. Yeah. Somebody did. Too. It probably wasn't he. It was probably whoever was writing the book with him. Yeah. But the fifty. So we're not. We're going to just write this part right here. Is just going to get across through it. It's the two. Yeah, there's just no way that I'm going to I'm going to buy that 3 because that's not what a moment does. So what does that turn out to be? 171.1 So everything he does in um, section B of that problem which is disregarded. Yeah, that well or just change the uh, well two. yeah, change that 30 times three to thirty times two, and then the f the reason the reason Jeff was saying he screwed everything up is because he had forty nine point two instead oh, of forty two point nine. Yeah. So they made they made a mess out of that, but they came back and came back strong on that last section there. I'm just looking to see <laughs> now, if we looked at that. What would happen if we looked at this? Well, we had 57, the reaction at B was 57.1, right? Mm -hmm. So if we looked at, if we cut this and looked to the right, the only thing that's going on there is the reaction at B, right? Everything else was on the other side of that. So they do add up. Is that making sense to you? Hope so. When you said you look at it, well, if we, instead of where we cut that at nine meters, if we took that and drew the other side of that, we have to go back a page or two. Yeah, the whole beam was 10 meters originally. I can find it. Yeah, the whole beam, there was actually more out here. And. We had cut it at nine, so it's, uh, it's about three eight, nine, yeah. So there was three meters more here, and that's where the reaction at B was, which was 57.1, wasn't it? So if we had taken that and looked at it from the just the right side of it, our free body diagram would have looked something like this, where we would have just had the 57.1. 
kilonewtons. Nothing else going on, is there? So the, the V in this case is just 57.1. Going up, though, instead of down. Or, you know, positive instead of negative. So it's actually the, the left side would be going up instead of the right side. You don't have to multiply it by the three because it's the moments. That would be for the moment, wouldn't it? Okay, yeah. Yeah, so if you did the moment, 57.1 times 3, what's that come out to? About 171.1? No, it wouldn't be that. Yeah. Close enough. Should have actually been, I mean, we didn't have any round off there. It should have been the same, I would have thought. Might have been round off in the original. On this one? Yeah. The 42, well, the 42.9. No, I mean, in the 57.1, it might have been 57.0 or something. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Could have started way back there, couldn't yeah. it? Yep. So, hopefully that makes some sense to you. It's just a matter of, the only thing we're doing different now from what we did at the beginning of the semester is we're just looking at that beam in different locations, aren't we? And now we're, we're, we're stepping it up just a little bit and we're saying, doggone, we can find out what's going on in that beam anywhere along that beam. Now, keep in mind, just like the torsion, there's nothing's changing from here to here, right? As far as the shear is concerned. The shear would be the same until you got out to here. And then once it just barely gets past that, then it's going to change, isn't it? And that's what you're going to see when we start talking about the, the shear diagrams. See, nothing changes from here to here. Or there'd be some kind of slope there, wouldn't there? So, nothing is changing from here to here. Nothing will change from here to here. So, anywhere in there, it's all the same. Okay, as far as the shear is concerned. The moment does change, though, doesn't it? The moment will be changing yeah, because, of <clears throat> because of the distances. And if we look at that, get to where the moments are and you can see it there there's your slope now there's another type of moment diagram where it's you know, it, but this is a evenly distributed load so it's going to be an arcing type application so I think those pictures make it easier to see of what we're talking about that's why I wanted to sneak in there real quick. We'll show you how to get those. But <clears throat> well, what's this 